In this video, I'm going to be making compost tea. In fact, I'm going to be trying to make a fungal tea. And in order to do this, I'm going to test some different factors, some variables to see which has the biggest impact so that you guys, when you're brewing, know exactly what to do to have the most biologically active and fungal dominant tea. Those of you that follow the channel will know that I've already done some videos on compost tea, what it is, and also I've done a little trial on one in the past. Uh, I'll put a link to this one in the description below. Now, a number of you have been asking if I could do a video on fungal inoculants and also how to make more fungal tea. So I thought I'd kind of combine those two subjects into this one video and explore it a little bit more with a trial. Now, don't worry if you are hoping for a video specifically on fungal inoculants. I'm planning to do one of those in the near future. So perhaps subscribe to the channel if you're not already to stay tuned for when that one drops. So for this trial, I'm going to test a couple of factors to see exactly what has more impact. And the ones that I've chosen are time, so increasing the brew length, see if that has a bigger impact on fungal growth within the tea, and also on temperature. So I'm going to add a heating element into one of my brewers and see if that has more of an impact. Now, in order to make this a reasonable trial, in order to make it fair, I've also got a control bucket which I've set up as well. So we're going to run for 24 hours for some of the buckets and we're going to run for 48 hours for another. And this is what I did. I used the same kind of general setup that I used in that video I just showed you earlier. So we're taking a simple bucket, I think it's around 24, 25 litres in size. We're following the same methodology that I applied before. So that's kind of in reference to the white paper that I mentioned that we did in the laboratory, which kind of gave us a recipe that we could rely on over and over again to give really uh, decent results time and time again with different compost materials. So once we had our buckets kind of lined up, I've gone for three here. Um, I've also got the same kind of air stone as well. I set them all up in my little brewing area, filled them with water, and I put a heating element into one of those. And I actually left them overnight just to kind of gas off all the chlorine and nasties within the water uh, before I started the brew process. So when it came to the first brew day, this was actually to set up the brewer that I was gonna run for the longest time. And I'd elected to go for 48 hours and I set it up at nine o'clock in the morning. That was going to be my kind of cut off and I'd set the following ones up the next day at nine o'clock as well. Um, and I did kind of what I've done before. I uh, got the water running, aerating. I added in my compost. Then I added the humic acid and the molasses as well. And I'm going to put a link to that paper that I mentioned. If you haven't watched the other videos and you want to know what that recipe is, um, hit me up on the link in the email to get a copy of that paper. So I let this run for 24 hours. I checked it occasionally as well, just to see how it was getting on. Because I hadn't maxed the bucket up like I did in my last trial, I reduced the amount of water and scaled the proportions of the foods as well. I didn't actually have the same problems with bubbles, which was useful as well. But come nine o'clock the following morning, so 24 hours in, I then set up the other two buckets in exactly the same way. Poured the compost in, added humic acid, added the molasses, um, made sure that the um, heating element was set correctly as well. I was running this at 27 degrees. That was kind of what I chose to set it up at before I put it in the water and let the water come up to, to temperature before I started. Um, I also then added some more food, exactly the same amount again to that first bucket which had already been running 24 hours. So I'm just going to interject here to talk a little bit about the compost. Yes, I tested it before. In fact, actually it's the same source material that I used in the last video so I understand the properties. I'm not going to put it in this video but if you're really interested, perhaps go back to that other video and have a look and you can see the biological profile of it. The other thing, just a little bit more about temperature. So 
It's late May that I'm running this trial in the UK. Um, it's still quite temperate, even though it looks like gorgeous sunshine. Well, it is gorgeous sunshine. Even though it looks really bright and really hot, it's not particularly hot. The maximum temperature that the ambient buckets were getting to was 19. The lowest, the night's a little bit warmer, the lowest was around 8 and 9. And there'd obviously be some transference of ambient temperature into the water over time, but I was happy. The purpose of this trial is just to distinguish on that temperature scale between ambient, and that's kind of why I set the temperature as high as I did. I could probably go one or two degrees above the 27 that I went for, but I was happy that that was safe for things not to get too catastrophic and anaerobic, and it was a big enough difference against the natural ambient temperature. Now, obviously, the ambient temperature that you're running at will have an impact on the microbes that you're culturing or brewing up in your tank. So, but this is just a simple trial. I can't control the ambient temperatures. I possibly could have done a little bit more in terms of monitoring it, but in reality, it's not gonna help you guys because the temperatures where you live are going to be different and you're going to be brewing at different times of year as well. So the point is, is the applied temperature more than ambient or is it the same or less than? Does it have an impact or not? So come the beginning of day three, it was a gorgeous morning, really bright sunshine. At nine o'clock, I got my uh, little vessels ready to go and collect my sample. I turned off the brewers and then I took a little bit of sample from the middle of each bucket for each of those treatment types. Um, and then I got these samples and I took them off to the laboratory to get the guys there to analyze. And this is what the results were. So first of all, let's look at the total bacteria. And it's clear from the graph that the best of the buckets was the warmer brew. And actually it was by quite a long margin. The range went from uh, just around 450 micrograms per milliliter in the control brew to just shy of 500 in the brew that was longer, all the way up to almost 700 in the warmer brew. So really quite a significant uh, increase in the uh, temperature trial bucket. And if we look at the total fungi, wow is all I say, a huge, huge difference here. The ranges went from 7.4 in the control brew to 8.6 in the longer brew. So brewing for longer did benefit the uh, total fungi population. But when you consider that the warmer brew was well over 100, 125 micrograms per milliliter, a really significant increase in the warmer brew again. The active bacteria also clearly shows that the uh, temperature trial bucket significantly benefited the active bacteria population and that was by a long margin as well so you're talking uh, active bacteria 28.9 almost 30 micrograms per milliliter um, down to 4.9 in the longer brew and 5.1 in the control brew so approximately the same so interesting to see that there was no real difference between the control brew and the longer brew in terms of active bacteria. And finally, let's have a look at the active fungi. Um, clearly, we can see that the control and the temperature um, trial bucket are the same. They both have around two micrograms of active fungi per um, milliliter of solution whereas the longer brew only had 0.1 so really quite a bit lower and now if I put all the results on screen from the test reports themselves um, I suppose it raises a couple of questions or one really 
the warmer brew clearly had the biggest effect overall, but why might the longer brew um, show some slight improvements and underperform, especially compared to the control, in other areas, especially with regards to fungi? There really wasn't that big an increase in the total fungal population, and the active fraction was actually quite a bit less. The active fungi was less as well. Well, I suppose one hypothesis might be that even though I topped the food up again on the second day, so after the first 24 hours, I added the same amount of food again to the brew, it's likely that I didn't supply enough food. And so some uh, kind of cannibalization went on. The diversity within the brew started to become less as some organisms benefited and others didn't. And in order to compensate for that, perhaps it would be good to run the trial again and increase the amount of foods that I add at that 24-hour mark, kind of halfway through the brew cycle. Because after all, there's going to be a lot more organisms, in theory, in that bucket than there were at the start. And you're only giving them the same amount of food that you started that brew with. So perhaps try and double the amount or maybe even triple the amount of food halfway through that brew cycle might see a similar uh, gain when we consider the warmer brew. And as for the warmer brew, wow, those numbers really skyrocketed pretty much on all fronts except the active fungi. Now, why was the active fungi concentrations that we recorded only the same as in the control? Well, I think that if I had increased the duration of the brew in the warm brewer, and perhaps increase the amount of foods as well, we could have seen significantly superior results in terms of active fungi. Clearly what has happened is the total population, so the total bacteria, the total fungi has gone from being very small and skyrocketed. Now the active fraction takes a little bit of time to perhaps catch up, which I think is what we've seen here. So we've started with quite a small biomass and a tiny fraction of that being active. And over time, the total biomass, kind of the size of everything we're dealing with has increased, whereas the active fraction has only increased a small amount. So there's a little bit of a delay perhaps, and that's why I think more food, more time, might mean that we get a bigger kind of active fraction, active fungal fraction in our warmer brew tank. So it's obvious from the results of the trial that the best brew for fungi was achieved with a heater in the brew tank. So my recommendation for you is play around, put a heating element in your brewer and also play around with the length of time and the amounts of foods that you're using in your brew tank. Try double the amount after 24 hours, maybe even triple the amount if you're looking to get the most fungally dominant and active brew that you can. So there we go, those were the results. I found it really interesting. I love brewing compost tea, especially when it is kind of late spring and the sun's out and I can just pour the contents that I've brewed straight onto my veggie patches and get the benefits from it as well. Uh, but what did you think of this trial? Do you have a view? Do you have a question? Do you have your own experiences that you want to share with me as well? If you do, please drop me a comment below. Maybe give the video a like if you enjoyed it. That's helpful to me. And until the next video, I will see you.